Greetings and welcome to another video. It's Saturday 23rd of July 2022 and welcome to Granville Park. Today is the first time I've ever visited Granville Park and if you're interested in how I found myself here today then uh, feel free to watch the previous two videos I made earlier on this afternoon. That said, long story short, the entrance to Grenville Park that you can see in front of me is right next door to the entrance to Shropshire Golf Club. So whether you're driving or walking or you're on your bicycle, if you can find your way to Shropshire Golf Club, then the entrance to Grenville Park is right next door. Now, I'm not going to explore Shropshire Golf Club today, but if I wanted to, maybe in a future video, then as you can see, I'd have to travel 400 metres up along this road. But like I say, that's for a possible future video some other day. In the meantime, there's something else I want to focus on. First things first, this footpath over, over here. Now, I don't know anything about this footpath and I don't know where it goes to, but already I'm thinking it will be a great idea for me to come back here again in the next few weeks or so to make a new video for YouTube to explore this footpath in front of me. So, yeah. Definitely got to sort that out. On top of that, if we take a closer look at this signpost. You can see that a section of the Telford T50 50, 50 mile trail. A section of the Granville Heritage Trail. And a section of the Hutchison Way. All of which point to my right and can be explored slightly further down this road in front of me and I think I know the uh, footpath in question where you can go to to further explore those footpaths but we'll get to that hopefully later on in this video with that in mind if we were to travel along this road in front of me far enough we'll find ourselves in Donington specifically at the Donington Asda supermarket but we're not going to go that far today instead we're going to focus on something else and what we're going to focus on is the Granville Park itself. What I want to do in this video is look at some information, local information and local history of Granville Park. And yeah, basically that. I'm not going to explore Granville Park today. That's going to be definitely the subject of a different video in the next few weeks basically so I'm going to come back here at some point in the next few weeks or so and properly explore Granville Park in the meantime I just want to focus on some local information about the place so yeah with that in mind let's carry on As you can see, this is the car park at Granville Park and there's plenty of space for people to park their cars if you decide to drive here which is really, really good to be honest here. On top of that, if, like me, you have a bicycle and 
you decide to cycle here. If we look to my left here, there is somewhere to securely to well, to secure. Uh, there is somewhere to lock your bike secure and keep it safe while you're exploring Granville Park on foot. So that's always useful to know. Very very handy. And if you look behind me, we've got a couple of picnic benches. So in the nice weather, if you want somewhere to sit and have something to eat, then this place has you covered. And it, this looks like a really, really nice spot to chill out and relax, to be honest, yeah. And in front of me, you've got a couple of signposts with local information about Granville Park. Welcome to Granville Country Park. Now as you can see, this signpost has got lots of local information by a group called Friends of Granville Country Park. There's a lot of information there to go through and hopefully, hopefully they've got a page or a group on Facebook for people to visit or on some other social media. So if you've got internet access and if you want to learn about the Friends of Granville Country Park, I'm guessing find them on Facebook or Twitter or whatever else and just check them out accordingly. You'll also find there's a couple of boxes with leaflets in front of me. Now in one of these boxes, in one of these boxes you'll find this leaflet, Granville Nature Reserve, which tells you about information about the wildlife you can expect to find at Granville Park. And as you can see, this leaflet was produced by the Friends of Granville. And you've got their contact information right there. Which is going to be really, really good to check into, to be honest. In the other box, you'll find this leaflet, Granville Heritage Trail. And in this leaflet, it talks about the 12 kilometre or seven and a half mile voyage of discovery into northeast Telford's industrial past. And to be honest, when I get home tonight after making this video, when I get home, this particular leaflet is going to be really, really interesting to read, to be honest with you. I look forward to reading this one. Then you've got this signpost here, which I mentioned toward the end of my previous video today. Welcome to Granville Country Park. Granville Local Nature Reserve is one of the largest open green spaces in Telford, covering an area of 61.4 hectares. The Local Nature Reserve is formed of copses, heaths, grasslands, pools, scrubs, wet woodlands, oak-capped mounts, and many species of wildlife. The rugged landscape of Granville is the result of over 200 years of industrial upheaval. Coal mines, canals, railways and blast furnaces nearly eliminated the previous agricultural landscape bar a few very important exceptions. The pit mounds, cuttings, waterways and some very impressive brick and stone work ruins are all that is left of the, indus of the industry of people like the Dukes of Sutherland and the men and women who worked for their Little Shore Company. 
The local nature reserve is owned by Telford and Recon Council, who work in partnership with the Shropshire Wildlife Trust and Friends of Granville to care for the reserve for the benefit of its wildlife and to promote public enjoyment of the reserve. Please be careful as you explore and help us protect the reserve by not climbing on the structures. Thank you. Now as you can see there's a map of the uh, Granville Park and there's a lot of things to explore here which is going to be absolutely amazing to do so in future videos. One thing I want to have a look at especially is toward the top here Muxton Marsh. Now I was at Muxton Marsh I think it was 2020 yeah the summer of 2020 and I made a couple of videos at Muxton Marsh and also another video which can be over uh, the Granville Heritage Trail which can be found at Muxton Marsh or at least at the edge of Muxton Marsh and if we have a look over here next to this map you've got a considerable amount of information about the local area and a lot of history about Granville Park and before making this video I was reading some of the information provided on this signpost and to be honest I found it really interesting I found the whole thing just seriously fascinating I'm not going to read through the entire post but anyone able to come here in person to, vi to visit Granville Country Park I would recommend you do take time to read this signpost because there's a lot of interesting stuff here an example of which as I mentioned a moment ago Muxton Marsh SSSI the Tithe map of 1840 shows that what is now Muxton Marsh was then called Marsh Meadow Lesseaux. The general shape of the field has been relatively unchanged despite the bulk of the freehold colliery pit mound directly to the east. The brook that feeds the marsh teems with aquatic life, freshwater shrimp, great diving beetles, minnows, frogs and caddisfly larvae. The grassland becomes progressively drier going west and consequently contains a considerable array of plants, so much so that it has become a site of special scientific interest. Soft and hard rush, remote and hairy sage, hemp, meadow vetchling, marsh thistle, common spotted and southern marsh orchid are just some of the plants that can be found at Muxton Marsh and obviously the water levels are carefully monitored so yeah that the Muxton Marsh is just one of the many places you can visit here at Granville Park and like I say I mentioned that specifically because back in 2020 I think it was I did make a video I have made a previous video at Muxton Marsh so yeah and if we look to my left here we've got a fantastic wood sculpture of a fox and I'll be honest this sculpture looks absolutely beautiful I love this it's amazing so yeah and if we look to my left obviously the road goes off in this direction but there's a gate to the side there so going through that gate that little pedestrian gate at the side means it's perfectly possible for you to go and explore that way which I do plan to do 
a, in the next few weeks or so in a future video. On top of that, if we come back here, if we look at these steps, right here, I'm going to make plans to come back again here and explore up those steps and see where it goes. And as you can see, going up these steps is a section of a Telford T50 50, 50 mile trail. So that's going to be fantastic to explore to be honest here. Now, as I said at the start of this video, there is one more spot I want to have a look at. So, let's get to where we want to be. Okay, as you can see, we're back at the gate entrance of Granville Park. And what I want to look at now is right behind me we're going to have another look at that signpost that i'm now looking at right in front of me What I want to look at now are these three signposts for the Telford T50 50, 50 mile trail, the Granville Heritage Trail and the Hutchinson Way. As said earlier, as you saw at the start of the video, all three signposts point to my right. Down along this road here, and I think I know where they lead to, so let's go have a look at them. Now the first thing we need to watch out for is this signpost in front of me. Welcome to the canal basin and lodge furnaces area of Granville Nature Reserve. Now I spoke about this signpost in my previous video today and we'll come back to this video in a few moments. But first things first, what we, want, what we want to do now is just come over here, follow the road round to my left, and you can see in front of me that metal gate there. Let's have a look at this metal gate right in front of me. And this is what we're looking for, basically. If we look to my left, there's this gate here which you can travel through. And if you want to follow the Hutchison Way, and if you want to follow this section of the Telford T50 50, 50 mile trail then you come through this gate and follow this path here and yeah again this is another section of path that I would love to explore and make another YouTube video about on another occasion in the next few weeks or so that's going to be really interesting to do so yeah I look forward to doing that in the meantime, in the meantime, I just want to head back over here. I just want to talk about this signpost here. Welcome to the Canal Basin and Lodge Furnaces area of Granville Nature Reserve. And as you can see, that's a picture, an artist rendition of what the site used to look like 
when it was, uh, well, doing what it did. So yeah, that's an artist rendition of what the place used to look like back in the day. And if we have a closer look, we can learn about the history of the place. You are standing near one of the most productive blast furnaces in Europe. In contrast to the present peaceful environment, in the 19th century, this area was a hive of industry and industrial activity. The canal basin was once connected to the Donington Wood Canal on the other side of a road, one of the earliest canals to be built in England. Tugboats transported coal, limestone and iron to and from the furnaces. The furnaces produced pig iron from 1820 until they closed in 1888. The large remaining structures faced with sandstone blocks are the ramps used for tipping materials into the tops of the furnaces. Remains of the furnaces themselves can still be seen at the base of the ramps. Some of the interior brickwork of the furnaces has been melted and glazed by the heat, which was intensified by air being blasted through them. Light railways connected the furnaces and the canal basin and later provided links to the surrounding area. Underneath the bank of a pool at the far end of the site are the remains of offices and powder rooms later converted for used stables. The path leads back to the road opposite the main car park and you pass the remains of a 19th century privy in memento of a time when houses only had outside, outside toilets. So yeah. More information about this local site along with the greater area of Granville Nature Reserve uh, can be seen at the other signpost that we looked at earlier on in this video and like I said there's a lot of fascinating information going on here it's going to be great coming back here again exploring this place more basically I'm, I'm looking forward to that it's going to be fascinating learning more about the local history of Granville Nature Reserve So yes, welcome to Granville Park. I've loved finding this place today and I've really enjoyed learning a bit about the history of Granville Park. I really enjoyed that bit. Definitely coming back here again, that's for sure. On that note, I'm going to finish this video here. Thank you everyone for watching and if if you're able to do so, I would very much recommend people come here and explore this place because it looks absolutely amazing. But yeah, on that note, I'm also going to be coming here myself again to make future videos about this place. So I'm looking forward to that. On that note, I'm going to finish this video right here. Thank you everyone for watching this video and thank you for watching all, all the videos we've made today. Um, I hope everyone is having a good day and I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. So yeah, take care of yourselves, be safe and I look forward to seeing you all soon in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.